Please, please be seated. Again and again, you called us to return. Annette Gordon Reed is a professor of history and the author of the memoir and group of essays on Juneteenth. She grew up outside of Houston in East Texas in Conroe. And like all Texas school children, including my own, she took Texas history twice in fourth and seventh grade. She, as a black American child, drank in the myths of the cowboys, the Alamo, all the while knowing her own family history of race, violence. In her town, her own town, there were two infamous lynchings, one in 1922, and as though history was just repeating itself in 1940. At her parents' wishes, she was the single black student in the white elementary school. She knew that race in America is an unerasable reality, and she knows as a scholar that it permeates the founding documents of this country. And she retains an affection for Texas, a love for her family, and she identifies and claims her rightful part of Texas history. Her knowledge of race in her family was very unlike my growing up, where race was never spoken of and slavery might as well never have existed. I acknowledge in this service that depending on our personal histories and background, we have different relationships to the history that we will recall in this service. Former colleague Micah Jackson, who taught preaching here, said, be very careful as a preacher about using us and we. So as we confess, let us acknowledge that we all have different relationships with the we. This is the work of correction, revision, rethinking these myths, what they leave out, and what they celebrate, and the work of renouncing the myth of white innocence. We'll do three things in this service. We will remember, we'll remember the structural and societal sin, and we remember the heroes and the visionaries who had agency and resisted this sin. Some of their names, Jacob Fontaine, Barbara Jordan, Myra McDaniel, Bertha Means. These are the heroes of this American history. And just this Saturday, the church celebrated the ordination of Paula Clark as Bishop of Chicago. We rejoice as well in our remembering. We tell the truth. Ah, so very hard and so necessary. We repent, a verb and an activity that is not restricted to Lent and Advent. Repentance is the note of this service, confessing and naming our sins. Again and again, you called us to return. It's about repenting and returning. And this activity of remembering, telling the truth and repenting is not happening in a lecture or a study group, or in a hard conversation. But in this service, it's taking place in a liturgy of thanksgiving. 
of the Eucharist, where we put this story of Texas history and Austin history and the seminary's history into the grander, larger, overarching story of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. A story that has an unjust execution right at its center. God raised this martyr to God's right hand to reign. And God did this raising in order to open for us the way of freedom and peace. God raised Jesus to make it possible for us forgiven sinners to cross boundaries, to make peace, to be free, to have life and have it abundantly, life abundant meant for each. The truth is hard. It can be uncomfortable and painful. May we be given grace to be taken up into this story of transformation and to celebrate here with thanksgiving at this table of the Lord. We remember, we tell the truth, we repent, and we are set free for the kingdom of God and for God's work of healing. Amen.